Okay, so here we are. This is part four of my what is the area under a curve series. So the first one I did, what's the area under curve, and I used summation notation uh, and limits to find the area under curve. And then the next time I did the antiderivative, and then I did a numerical calculation. And you think, oh, what the heck is a numerical calculation? It's just silly. No, here's why it's not silly. So here is a car right down here, and it has a device that measures the velocity as a function of time. Let me go ahead and say it cheats, okay, because it actually measures the position as a function of time and then takes the derivative. But whatever, imagine you're in a car with a speedometer, and you want to know how far you went. And so you record, and I actually want to do this, and you record the, uh, the speed on the speedometer every second, and you write it down, and you plot it and you get something like this. So this is the velocity as a function of time in the x direction and you want to say okay well how far did it go? And the answer is the area under curve. So I, I could I could integrate or I could do summation notation but I can't because I don't have a function. I don't have a function here I just have data. Okay so how do I, how do I integrate data? And so now we have to do a numerical calculation. Okay so again this is the same thing I did. This is, this is identical for summation notation, but I do want to point out one thing, this idea of a uh, the area under curve meaning something. So if I have the definition of velocity is the change in x over the change in time, if the velocity is constant, then if I plot velocity versus time, delta x would be the area under the curve. So the area under the curve is the change in position. Uh, so, and then if I look at this little square right here in some short time interval, then I can approximate it as being a constant velocity even though it's not. And this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take the uh, the velocity, the a time interval that I have, that the data collects every 0.05 seconds anyway, and find the velocity at the beginning of that time interval, and then assume it's going the same velocity and find that area, and then just add up all the areas. And this is identical to the numerical integ integration from before, except I don't have a function for the data. I just actually have data. After that, I'm actually going to do it a different way just to show you that you can make be more uh, sophisticated. And so one better way to find the area under a curve is to use the beginning and the end data points. So if I have, uh, if I have a, is this a trapezoid? What's that shape? I don't know. Not rectangle. Uh, I can find the area of the curve based on the height of the initial part over here and the final part. It's just the average of those two it gives me the uh, height of this middle part. And so that would be my delta x over there. So I'm going to do it both ways. All right, let's get started. So I actually did uh, this with Logger Pro. It, it's uh, it's a, a data collection in Logger Pro. I showed you that track. And it gives you all the data. And so I just copied. And this is not the best way to do it, but I like to do this way because it makes the most sense. So I just copied all the data. Uh, for velocity. I wrote down the time interval dt and I copied all the velocity right here and yeah it's just a huge list and then it doesn't give the commas so you could just go put the commas in it doesn't take but five just a few seconds so just that's what I did. So here's all my velocity every and so this is at t equals 0, 0 0.05, 0 0.0 blah 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 blah. Okay so the first thing we need to do is how do you traverse quote traverse a list like this. I'm calling the list v. So let me do let me show you how and then I'll explain it. So I'm going to say for i, and I do things the wrong way. Okay, I'm, I know that. It's cool, but it works. Okay, so for i in range, length of v. So this says you could just go for i in v, and it would go through each of the elements in the velocity list. But then I wouldn't be able to reference the similar thing in another list. Okay, so I'm doing it this way. Uh, and let's just go ahead. I'm just going to print. Print. Uh, I could print i, and that would be that would just go zero through whatever number they have. Let's just run that just to show you. Okay, so that just goes. There's a hundred data points, but uh, I want to print like things like this velocity right here, which is you know let's say the 70th element. So if I go out of the loop. Uh, in a for loop, you need to have that colon and it needs to be indented for everything in the loop. But I'm going to be out of the loop. I'm going to say print v70. This is the actually the 71st element in the list. And let's just see what happens. I should have done that. Okay, so that's that. That's the velocity right there, 0.17. Okay, so that's how we can reference them. So now let's just go back up here. 
and print v i and this will just reproduce the list and but it helps us understand what's going on okay so the last data is zero the one before that 0, 0.00 so it looks like everything's cool okay there's all my data so i mean if if you can't reproduce the data then you can't get the data so i just did that okay so now the first thing i'm going to do is make a list of time values that matches that so i'm going to say t equals zero and it and these uh brackets around it is that a bracket square bracket uh, that means it's a list and it has one element in there zero i'm going to start with an element in there although yeah i think that's what i would do i think i might have too many here but i think it'll work okay so now i'm just going to say uh i need my dt i've already got that did i have that dt yeah so i'm going to say d i'm going to say t equals t plus i'm going to add the element i times dt so i goes zero one two three four um actually i don't think i need this let's see if it runs and then let's just let's just print t i i don't know it might not work yeah i can't add it to oh i need i know what i need to do i need to say t equals it needs to be a list okay with nothing in it okay that worked okay cool cool so now i have my lit my have my times and i have my v's now let's do this let's plot v versus t t versus v just to make sure we can reproduce that graph so i'm going to use i again even though I, you probably shouldn't do that and i'm still going to do the exact same thing uh now i'm just going to go over here and plot oh i need a graph so let's go up here and say t graph equals graph x title is time and y title is velocity in meters per second and then i'm going to say fv equals g curve color equals color dot blue and that just that just gives me the line to plot now down here, I'm going to say uh, fv.plot, the x-coordinate is going to be the time, so this is going to be t i, and the y-coordinate is going to be v i. And you notice in this kind of loop, you don't have to increment the thing. It does that for you. It goes through each i. Uh, you don't have to do it. So let's run that. Lovely. Look at that okay so let's see there's that's it's a little different scale but i think it looks the same yeah let's see it has that little bump there it looks like it okay i think it's good okay so there's i have the data now i can integrate so let's integrate um i'll just leave that plot there because who cares so now i'm going to integrate so uh, the first thing i'm going to say is the distance value let's call that uh Let's call that, let's call it distance. This dist is zero. That's my sum. I don't want to call it dx. I don't want to call it x because it's not, that assumes I started at x equals zero. I want, to, I want to find the distance. And now for each step, I'm going to do the same thing. For i in range, length of v, and I'm going to calculate the time, the step, dx. And so over here, I have uh, delta x is v delta t. So I go over here, I can say V I times DT. DT is constant. Okay, that's it. Uh, now I can add that and I'm going to say distance equals distance plus DX. And that should be it. And then at the end, I'm going to print car traveled equals dist meters oops meters um yeah okay let's run it so it went 0.79 meters now like i said i cheated okay i cheated because i uh used a card that actually collected position data and then found the velocity from the position data so i already knew the position so i'm actually working backwards but i have that position data and let's look at what it says this is 0.792 
So here is the graph of the position of the function of time. It started at x equals zero and ended at, I have the thing right there, 0.795. And what did I have? 0.792. I mean, that, you, you should be pretty happy with that. Um, I could plot, I could plot the sum of the distances and I should get that graph. Let's do that real quick because it will be fun. Okay, so if I'm gonna go up here, I should, I wanna be correct. So it's not gonna be velocity, it's gonna be position now. Let me change that. And I'll, I'll make a new graph. Fx equals g curve, and it'll be red. Okay, now I'll go down here. And so when I'm adding up the distance, I'm just gonna plot the distance as a function of time. So let's say fx dot plot uh, ti and distance. I think that'll work. Oh, I, I plotted the other thing too. Okay, but that's fine. Actually, I'm pretty happy with that. But there you go. It's exactly the same. It, look, it's even red. You like that? Okay. Now, I did say I was going to do one more thing, and that was use this other formula right here. Let's use that formula. It's a little bit more complicated, but not really. Uh, so all I'm going to do is just change this up here and say vi plus v i plus one divided by two. Now, this is gonna give me an error because it, once you get to the last i, there is no v i plus one. Okay, so um, I don't know what to do. So let's just say we could do this. We could do one less. So we're, I'm gonna do the length of v minus one. Uh, and I'm not sure what's gonna happen. Yeah, let's just run it. It's going to be a surprise for both of us. Okay, so it looks like it worked. It gave me the same value, so I'm not sure uh, exactly uh, what happened there. But, um, oh, you know what? I did that with dx over here. I did that with the distance plot. This is, oh, no, that's right. Okay. Okay, so I'm surprised I didn't get a better value, but I think I might have... I'm having some problem with the counting here, but you get the idea. Here you have a numerical calculation for real data and you don't have a function, so you can't do an integral and you can't do a summation notation, but that's why there is there is one other way to do this, okay? And this is the story they always told us. And I'll just go ahead and tell you, I, I might do it, but I'm just gonna tell you. So if you wanna integrate this blue curve right there, one thing you could do is print this out. Print this out and find them and then cut it out exactly right along this border and find the mass of that paper and now i know the uh the position the velocity versus time i could find the uh, total distance traveled over the whole graph and then i cut out my i cut out my shape and i find the new mass and so by the ratio of masses i can find the ratio of areas and i can calculate one of the areas and so that's one other way to find the area under curve is just by literally finding the mass of the paper once you cut it out and that would be the area under the curve but this is way easier because Python's cool. Okay, I'll include a link to the code down below along with the other uh, tutorials on integration. The end. Talk to you guys later.